Welcome all. Uh, sorry about that we had to cut previous session short. Uh, I'm sure she will be happy to answer your questions on Slack or via email. We will contact him separately. And now we are very, uh, very happy to welcome uh, Jamie D. Chapman from uh, Whitington Wigan and Lee Teaching Hospital and Just Trust. Uh, she's a data scientist and uh, her research interests are like in time series forecasting and change point analysis. I hope you might have seen Jamie in change point analysis workshop, which happened last week. Uh, so Jamie, uh, over to you now. Hello, thank you, Anastasia. Um, just to say, I've really enjoyed the conference so far. Um, I didn't, I didn't get to see all the talks, but that's all right because I can spend next week catching up on the ones that I missed. So I can prolong the fun for another week or so. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk about uh, integrating. R and click sense, um, and in particular, how I use them, you know, this R and click sense integration to implement a new model at WWL for forecasting um, A and E attendances and admissions. Um, so the talk does require, I suppose, you know, a prerequisite is that you, you've maybe seen click sense before. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, there'll be some other trusts or NHS organizations on the call that are, are currently maybe using click in their organization right now or they might be thinking about um, getting click. So I'll just, oh, sorry, my slide is not changing. There we go. So just to say what I'm gonna talk about, um, first of all, I'm just gonna give you a bit of a run through on actually how you can use click uh, with R. So there's kind of three ways you can use it. Um, so I'll let you know about those. Then I'll go on to the fun part, um, which is the actual um, A&E forecasting model. Um, so what was actually a bit about that model um, and how we maintained it and the outputs from that model, a bit of further work um, and just give a summary. So and at the bottom as well, I've just got an appendix. So this is what I'm not going to talk about. So what I'm not going to talk about is actually the intricacies involved in getting R and click sense to be integrated. Um, because I didn't think that'd be a very interesting talk, but hey ho. Um, but what I will do is I've put some links and things in there for you, so you can you can get access to the exact um, instructions that I follow to implement it. And it was you know it was pretty straightforward. So I think so if I can do it, then I have no no doubt that um, almost everyone else on this call uh, will be able to do it too. So motivation: Why did I integrate Click with R? So when I started at um, WWL, there, there was a model in place for forecasting um, A&E attendances and, and admissions. Um, and this was a, a linear regression model, um, but it was actually a model that was living in the, in the data warehouse. And, and it actually had kind of fixed, fixed coefficients for those regression coefficients. Um, the, the whole thing was written in SQL um, and it was, it was ran as a stored procedure in the data warehouse kind of each evening as an update. Um, and what did I think, you know, was was missing about this solution? Um, and I've listed some of those things here. So there wasn't really any model retraining or, or maintaining. I don't I'm not sure the coefficients had actually been updated in that model since it had first been implemented. Um, that, you know, that's probably a con consequence of it sitting with the data warehouse team. Um, then, you know, in addition to that, these parameters were static when really we want, you know, dynamic model parameters when we're building forecasting models. Um, it was given, you know, this potentially an unnecessary demand on the data warehouse that didn't need to be there. And I suppose, the, you know, the most important thing was was actually we can't when everything's living in, in SQL, you know, as a stored procedure, we can't exploit those more complex forecasting models, which which are available in R. Um, and my last point is that this model was really not robust to changes in behavior. Um, so as Anastasia said, I, I love change points. So anything that results in a change point, I get super excited about. Um, unfortunately, in this case, it was a pandemic. Um, but anyway, that, you know, during COVID-19, this this model was terrible. The, the forecasts it were producing were in just nonsensical at times. So we really wanted to change it. So, so here's a little, me as a little, you know, stick lady um, arriving at my new job at WWL about, you know, just short of 12 months ago now. And I, I love R, I love R shiny. So quite naturally, I wanted to, you know, rip this entire model out and replace it with um, a deployment that was really using R to be building the model. But this, this raised some questions, some things I had to think about. Um, how would I productionize the model? How would I communicate the model? Can I even use our shiny in the trust? Is that even an option? Um, and in all of these situations, what resources uh, would I need? 
Uh, and in the end, I came to the sol solution that the click sense was actually the path of least resistance for me. Click sense was already in place at WWL. Not only was it in place, it is loved and adored in my department, um, in the BI department. It, it was hosted on a server, which, which everyone can access. Anyone in the hospital can access our ClickSense servers. And, and there was actually ample computing power living on that ClickSense server. Um, and the skills were already there, you know. Um, we've got quite a big ClickSense team at WWL. So if I try and if I try to implement a, a Shiny app, it just would have been me having to do all development. Um, but using ClickSense means actually I had a bigger support network within the department. Oh. So that was my motivation. Um, so now I'm just going to show you uh, three ways that you can use R with ClickSense or, or ClickSense with R. Um, there's three kind of ways. So you've got line by line during a data load um, as a calculated measure. And this is this is really like on demand um, kind of processing and also to just retrieve data. So it's more of a batch process. So first one during a data load. So if you've used click, something like this should be familiar with you. I'm I'm assuming you can see my moves, my mouse moving around. I hope so. Um, so anyway, um, sorry. So say here we're retrieving some data which I have stored as a QVD file, and it's it's age on arrival. And let's say for some reason I can't be bothered to write out all of the case statements that would give me those kind of age bins so you know is this a um, a patient who's less than 17 higher than 75 etc um i could just use an r script um to run a function that i like so this using the cut function which is going to bin all these ages for me and that will return yeah. for you um, my printing thing so she said oops <laughs> and that will return for you um, the age bin that they're in. If that makes sense. This is probably not a great example. You might not want to use this cut function here. It's probably more efficient um, just to write it out in SQL um, or in, in click code. Um, but, you know, if there's a more exciting function in R that you want to use, then you can just call that. Um, and just to let you know here, what it will do is it will send it will send your data to R line by line. So don't expect it to be vectorized once you've sent your data there because it's only going to be sending one one row of data at a time to R. Uh, the next way that you can use R with click is, is on demand. And this is really where it's acting like R shiny. Um, here's a diagram that I lifted from, from Click's website. Um, but essentially all this diagram says is that, you know, you've got the user interacting with the app. Maybe they're selecting some time dates, selecting some age categories, something like that. And then what will happen is the click engine will then talk to R R will update the analysis and then ping it back to click and all your kind of analytics that you're running anything in R um, will then update in front of you on the screen. It, just to make a note as well here, we have got Python, so you can interface uh, click with Python too. Same process, I believe. I haven't done it, to be honest. Um, I have bodged it by having my R interface and then using reticulate in R to use Python. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that, uh, but I just haven't got around to trying to even, you know, look into integrating Python with click. So here's just an example um, of how you can use it kind of like our shiny. So let's suppose you've got this data um, and you want to cluster your data using, say, k-means clustering, and you want your data points to be colored according to what clusters they're in. So here's your data here. I'm saying on the left, I've got number of clusters is three. If you click on your graph when you're in click, um, you'll be able to down the side here, go on your colors. Um, click color by expression and then here in this expression this is where you're going to talk to R so if I just go on to the next slide you can see that my color expression here is calling an R script which is doing some k-means clustering and it's returning what cluster each of those data points um, relate to important point here we've got this this variable vnum clust that was the variable here three so that's an input variable so as you might expect, then you can you can change that into um, input variable, sorry, to say two, and it's it's straight away going to update the coloring in your graphs, and and this is really quick. There's you know it, it updates re really quickly. It's great. I will just say that, for example, the reactivity um, in doing things like this isn't dealt with as as well as it is in our shiny, but you know I wouldn't expect it to be necessarily. Um, so then the final way we can use R with ClickSense is actually to to retrieve a data set in memory. Um, 
So, and this is the what I use to productionize our new forecasting model. So for example, in Click, we've got so forecasts. These are going to be all our forecasts we're retrieving. And then we're loading in the data into Click and we're saying, let's actually load it from our extension, which is our, our anal analytical connector. Um, and then this is the code we want to run. And it's going to run that code and return to you uh, the new, not the new, sorry, the forecast that you're generating. So I've just highlighted it here. So as I said, forecast, name of the table, we will store the data from R. Um, lines five to six, tell Click to get the data from R. Um, seven to eight this is all your r code and then here i just didn't mention this in the last side fact this is the name of the table of the data that you're sending to r so in this case here fact would be probably our you know historical a and e attendances or our historical a and e admissions that were pinging to r generating our forecast and then bringing them back into click in memory uh key points when we send the data table to click um, from click to r it's always stored in our in a data frame called Q. In R, we then need to return back a data frame, which can then be loaded into Click. And last point, if we write the code, we can write the code directly in Click, or we can source an R script file. I'd say the second's better because then you can set up all your, your version control behind it. Um, there's some more details uh, in the links in the appendix for you. But just quickly, you know, if you do want to retrieve R scripts, I've put these slides in more for people to go back and reference if they want to implement it. I've defined a variable here called VR source, which is the location of all my R scripts. I then, when I'm loading in my fact table, so i.e. my historical A&E attendances, I include this variable VR source to be a, a um, column in that data table such that it's getting sent to R along with the historical data. And that's it essentially those are the three key ways you can really use click with r um that last way for data retrieval is how we implemented this a and e forecasting model and i'll just briefly go through the model with you now um i've, I've included it kind of vague i'm not giving you much details but afterwards you know if you want any of this the code for these models just email me and i'm happy to send you the r code i've tried to include this is a this is a combination of like pseudo code meets R code. It's it's neither of those things, but I just thought it was helpful. Anyway, so say we want to forecast um, daily attendances. What we wanted was a dynamic forecasting model which could handle both regression variables. So we, we do want it to be a kind of a regression problem, but we also want to have a flexible ARIMA structure into that model as well. Um, and the way I did this. Uh, was to use the auto.arima function from the forecast package. If, you, if you've never had a play with this auto.arima function, I, I would really recommend it. I, I love it. I think it's fabulous, to be honest. Um, here's just the description of it from, from our documentation. So it's going to, the auto.arima returns the best arima model according to either an AIC, et cetera. Um, and the function conducts a search over possible models um, within the order constraints provided. So this is great because it means you're not restricting your model to have a fixed form. You can you can have the number of AR coefficients or the number of MA coefficients to be changing whenever you rerun the model. Um, so brilliant, I think. So that's for um, oh, I'll just go back. Sorry, I just I skimmed over this. So these were some of the regression variables we included: holidays, events, um, some Fourier terms for the yearly seasonality day of the week and weather because I've got all this seasonality coded in as a uh, regression re variables that's why I've put seasonal equals false on the auto.arima model so then looking at daily admissions um the way I see it is often um your for your the emissions that you expect are going to be essentially a regression model that's built upon your attendances so what's going to happen is your attendances are either a and e and some portion of those attendances um, are going to convert to admissions so if you, if you consider the problem as a regression problem historical admissions follows historical attendances then what this beta coefficient is in your regression problem is actually the conversion rate but i'll show you what our conversion rate looked like at wwl during the pandemic so this is the conversion rate prior to the pandemic. You know, it's floating around about 30 percent. And you can see here then when COVID-19, you know, the, the cases really started increasing and, and everyone got locked down. What you saw is that our conversion rate jumped. And this is really why our static um, prediction model failed, it, because all of these coefficient 
all of the coefficients in the admissions model were, were estimated on historical data and that historical data you know was fundamentally different now so to overcome this and to make the model robust for for future um you know future what waves in the pandemic so robust to this second peak we're having for example um i used the tv reg package in r and that fits for you time varying linear regression models which meant that no longer was this conversion rate being modeled as a as a fixed parameter it was going to be it was allowed to vary over time so hopefully making the model more robust for the future again i've just given you the, the description for this tvlm function that i used so a time varying coefficients linear model and there's some kind of automated bandwidth selection that it runs in the background which will which will help you estimate the coefficient and decide what window of this data we use to do that coefficient estimation. So the next part then was actually maintaining and monitoring that model that we were implementing for the A&E forecast. And to do this, um, we built a model training app in ClickSense. So what this app was doing, that whenever you did a data load, the app would, first of all, retrieve the most recent training data so what are our historical attendances and admissions up until now the next thing it would do is source the r code which will then retrain the model and save the new model to the server and also save the new forecast to the server and i was saving those as a qvd file And in ClickSense, you can you can schedule this data reload. So whenever you schedule a data reload, that's where your model is going to be retrained. And I schedule that to run. I think it runs every evening to update it because I'm only forecasting daily attendances and admissions. So I wouldn't have any extra information if I was to retrain it any often, any more often. Um, but then as a next level to this, so you don't just need to use this ClickSense app as a, as kind of a you know a, a vessel to retrain your model you can also then build out the pages of the app to to summarize things about the model so so what are the errors like uh, what does the forecast like uh, look like what are the confidence intervals um so this is what i did so this is just one page of our click sense training app so this is just displaying um i think this is the historical attendances um and these are the forecasts into the future along with their associated confidence intervals So then what did we do with the outputs of this model? So we were already using the outputs of our original A&E model. Um, so I'll just tell you what we were doing with those. So as I said, all the forecasts were saved as a QVD. Um, these then get loaded into two of our apps within the hospital. They get loaded into the A&E Live app and they also get loaded into the, our second um, hospital flow app. So that's giving you, if I go back as well, so you can see that the forecasts here are, are actually hourly forecasts. Um, and we can disaggregate the forecast here by age category and by um, sex. So this brings me on to uh, my next point for further work. So if you recall, I said that we were actually building models just to forecast um, daily A&E attendances and admissions. But actually, what we're also providing to, to the bed, bed managers are hourly forecasts. Um, and the way that we the way that we get to those hourly forecasts is we we, we disaggregate you know temporally and cross-sectionally so so we we go from the daily to the hourly and from the total to the female and the pediatrics etc um using a top-down approach so we just take the um the top level daily forecast and disaggregate them by historical proportions that we've seen um that's a fine solution for now but what it can mean is that your the the errors associated with your lower level time series um might be higher than those at the top um, so this is so the plan is that we're going to replace this by um, what's called a hierarchical reconciliation approach. So here, this when you get these slides, this is a link so you can go to the. To uh, the Amy, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you because I think we're we're running out of out of time really. But look, thank you so much for a very energetic and passionate talk. Uh, there's been lots of chat uh, uh, as we would expect actually and, and of course thank you for sharing your stuff. There are, there are some questions so yeah. just while the other speakers are getting ready um, let me start with my question and then I'll, I'll go on to the other one. Um, mm -hmm. So so Jamie what was really inspiring about your talk was maybe you're kind of there's you and maybe one or two other people who are kind of fond of R 
but you're in you, you, it's not like you've got a large team of our users around you so so how um the fact that you've been able to kind of use um use our in that environment uh, your your work speaks for itself but do you have any personal tips for people who might be in a similar situation to you um i i would say you just need to once you can kind of get R there on your server and, and show people what you can do with it, um, then everyone will get on board. I mean, it, it was great during, it was really COVID that, that really made the importance of R shine because we were able to make an app for, for the um, strategy and planning people to, to, to come up with different scenarios for, for bed requirements and things. And the only way they could do that was by us having click apps like R shiny. Um, so you just need to really get, get R installed. I mean, um, and, and then go from there, I suppose, if you want, if anyone wants any support with, um, you know, getting R onto click, then as I said, if you go into the back of the slides, I've got some instructions. And if you want any support with that, then just, just bob me an email. I'm, I'm really happy to help anyone out. That's fantastic. I, I just, I will run through just, just some of the questions. Have you been able to create UG plot charts in, in, in uh, click? Yes, yeah, so, so you can't immediately do it. Um, so you can't directly do it, but there's a workaround. You can essentially what what you would do is you'd you'd call R, um, run run your GG plot, and then and then save the GG plot plot as an image. And then what you can do is then if you can you can set click to then be looking at that image in the file location and, and get it to show up there. Um, so yes, you can do it, but you can't directly do it if that makes sense. Great. Look, we, we do have some more questions, but I'll try and arrange for them to be emailed to you. That's probably the best way to, to deal with them. Yep, uh, Jamie, wonderful. thank you so much indeed. It's no been problem. a pleasure to have you. And, and uh, if we can move over to the next talk, please, that would be great. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye.